Hi, my name is Sean Beasley. Today I want to demonstrate how very easy it is to set up OTRs to use an Active Directory server to manage password and user data, user being agents in keeping with the terminology used in reference to OTRs. After this video you should be able to authenticate users, remember these are our agents, against the default installation of an ADS. Additionally, the users will be synchronized to the database in order to be able to maintain your user information in one place. Then let's set up an MMC to manage our users and discover our directory structure. Your directory structure and ob object attributes are key to your success when trying to connect, filter, and regulate permissions with an OTRS. Open the Run dialog and type in MMC, then choose File, Add, Remove Snap-in, choose Add from the Standalone tab, then select ADSE Edit and Active Directory Users and Computers, clicking Add each time. The next thing we have to do is connect each snap-in to the directory. Please follow the following directions. Once you've done this, you can even save this MMC console for future reference. Need some important configuration items to make the connection. Some of the things you're going to need are a base DN, user attributes, IP or DNS name of the directory server, the full distinguished name of a user to search the search directory, and for the synchronization you're going to need the attributes first name, last name, and email. Let's go ahead and create a, a search user so that we can program this into the config PM and use this then to create the initial connection. I'm going to give this guy the first name of OTRS, the last name search, and the user login name is going to be really easy. We're just going to type in OTRS search. And when we're done, we're going to give him a password. And this password we're going to set to never expire and never change. And when we set this password, then we're going to have to use this password later in our config PM in order to make the initial connection. So let's go ahead and get the settings. In order to get the settings for our connection, we need to open up two files. These files are found in the installation directory of the OTRS. Our installation directory is C program files OTRS. And then we're going to go into OTRS and open up the kernel config PM. And then we're going to go into the kernel config directory and open up the defaults PM. Now what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to search. Let's go ahead and search for auth in the entire document. That's why I like this editor because it allows you to search the entire document or all open documents. This is called Notepad++. Then we're going to search out the line with auth module. Here we're going to see that the auth module begins starting at line 338. We're going to go ahead and highlight then this entire section of code beginning with the self auth module and continuing on downwards with all of the different types of attributes that can be used to control the connection to the Active Directory or in this case LDAP. LDAP is always referenced here in the config PM but it's the same thing whether you're using LDAP or whether you're using Active Directory or whether you're using eDirectory. So we're going to copy this all the way down to the LDAP, uh, LDAP parameters and then we're going to take the last line LDAP die. If you're using multiple backends then you might want to use this last attribute but uh, we're not going to go into this in this in this video. So just above the end of your own configuration options we're going to go ahead and paste this file in and we're going to start editing it. The first thing we're going to do is remove this block of information auth module. This is our basic connection information so we're going to uncomment all of this, and as you see, this is another good point of the Notepad++. I'm going to make a little, do a little bit of commercial here that you can just unblock and uh, uncomment an entire block. So our LDAP host is localhost, and we're going to go up here and set some ones. This allows us to use this as our second form of authentication. In the base DN, we're going to change it to uh, DC equals my, comma DC equals OTRS, comma DC equals local, which is my local Active Directory base DN, as you can see here. DC equals my, comma DC equals OTRS, comma DC equals local.
So now we need to go in and we need to get the attribute field for the Microsoft user. In Unix it's a UID and um, so if we just scroll through here and if we look for the login name of this user which we created earlier, OTRS search without a space, then we're going to see that the user ID or the login ID has the attribute SAM account name. So we can just double click on this which would allow us to modify it and then we'll do the trusty dusty cut copy and paste for the attribute. We'll copy this into our config PM and then paste it. So the next couple of blocks of settings you can use to uh, further control the access to your system we're going to go ahead and not discuss these right now because it would just ex greatly exceed the amount of time of this video that this video is allowed to be in YouTube. So the next thing we need to do is uncomment this block and this is where we're going to put the full distinguished name and password for our user that's going to be used to do the initial connect to the L uh, Active Directory and allow our users to log in. So going back into our user properties, then we scroll down or scroll up at this point. It's all alphabetically sorted. And we'll see here's the distinguished name. So then we can just double click on that and again use our trusty dusty cut copy and paste method. Place this into the search user DN. We'll now manually enter our password. And this is another reason that you should have your own user for the search DN that doesn't have any rights, any, group, any groups, any roles within the Active Directory because the password's in clear text. So the next couple of... Oh, we got to put these... As you see, if you have a good text editor, you'll see when the code has been broken. So now I'll replace these apostrophes in my code to be repaired. The next sets, uh, next couple of blocks of text we can remove. There's no re need for them. Also this uh, database conversion. Okay, get that out of there. The, the character set conversion. Now we'll unblock this last block. We have to set the one here too so that we don't forget it. And once we've done that then we can go back and we can get our sync portion. So the first portion we did was to allow the users to log in and uh, authenticate against the Active Directory but now we actually need user data. So what we have here is we have the possibility when the user logs in it'll authenticate against the user will authenticate him or herself against the Active Directory and then this next section will allow OTRS to basically vacuum all of the information about this user out of the uh, Active Directory and pack it in the database. This allows the users to log in and even if the Active Directory is not available at that point because the password will be synced into the database written into the database by the first login as well the um, user information. If this user information is not synced into the database then you're going to find out that you're going to get a, a message from the web interface when you try and log in and it's going to say panic need user data. That means that uh, that you could authenticate against the Active Directory but there's no user information in the database for your user. So that's why we need this uh, very important piece of information. Now if you've set up your OTRS in the past and all of your usernames and everything are uh, already in the database and uh, you don't want to sync them out of the LDAP then you can just do the first portion of this video and just set up the authentication module. We're going to go ahead and cut, copy and paste all of the information. It's pretty much just the same information again. Again, making sure that we put all our ones in here. So what happens with these ones? These ones basically say that um, the database backend is the primary backend, so we can still log in, for example, as rooted localhost, and we can also have some local users for OTRS without having to have them in the Active Directory. And um, if the user is not found within the database, then the Active Directory will kick in as the second 
uh, form of authentication. And as we know in, com in the computer world, a one is always really a two. So that's pretty much it. Now we can log in to our new system using our super.admin account and see the wonder of Active Directory and OTRS. Thank you for watching and I hope you've had a great time watching this. If you need any more help, please go to the mailing lists and I'm sure people would be more than willing to help you there.